Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> Happy Friday. It's Friday. It's our Friday show. Uh, this is where we preview and you can pre-order all the latest and greatest upcoming comics and whew, we have a lot to show you today. We, we do. It's a big week. It had us scrambling, running, we're pulling together. Last minute covers have just been yeah, released. Yeah, we but... got a like really awesome Peach Momoko, what is it, fourth print something we're going to show you. A lot of you probably one. haven't even seen that yet, mm -hmm. so... As you guys get on, please share the video, let everybody know you're watching, and that you get your comics from us. That would be so lovely. Uh, in case you don't know, my name's Megan, this is Andy and Jason, we're from Infinity Flux in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and this is what we do every Friday. So, yeah. <laughs> we're here to fill your life full of great, awesome, upcoming comics. So, uh, the comics we talk about today, it is your last chance to order these where they're all open order. You have for the DC books until Sunday at 5. For all the other books, Monday at 5. We have painstakingly, well, also now with the help of uh, Jenny, pulled together all these screens. Uh, we've read about the books. We're going to preview some of them, and the rest of them, we're just going to kind of give our thoughts on them. So. Yeah, some really big ones, some really big second printings. Mm -hmm. One in particular I'm thinking of. Yeah, the spoiler. <laughs> when, we, when we show it, we, we get to talk about it. I know. Cause... We get to... Boop, spoiled. Uh -huh. Yep, for sure. So, um, yeah, if you guys want anything that we go over in this video, just let us know. It's not a sort of claim show where we're going to run out of stuff. This is, all this is open o order. Open order, yep. Until this this uh, Sunday and Monday, for <laughs> DC and the rest of the books, respectively. All right, let's give people another reason to share. It is our share contest. Uh, first, we'll announce last week's winner, Megan? Yeah, last week's winner is Courtney FC. You win a copy of Batman Free Jokers number one and the variant of your choice. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, well, <laughs> she was a good one. Wasn't she in here earlier today? Yeah, she was. I, I missed her. Indeed. I was busy pricing comics and all. <laughs> so congratulations. Um, and yeah, if you guys shared this week's video, you get a chance to win Iron Man number one. It's got a wraparound cover, which is what you're seeing there on the left. And on the right is an Alex Ross Timeless variant. Oh my goodness, we're doing a giveaway that's not a Batman. I know. Shoot. And double Alex Ross. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. That's right, because he did the A and he did that. Yep. And I think it's the same for Hulk. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. He's busy. So the Timeless variants, we're getting a lot of them on this show today. So we'll see that too. All right, so we'll cool. tuck in. Yeah, and uh, just as a hint, not that many people actually share, so you got a pretty good chance if you win. <laughs> or to win, rather. Yeah, but please share. All right, if you want to follow along with other things that are coming out in the next few weeks, so the FOC, the Final Order Cutoff, the show we're doing today, is for comics that come out in a roughly three weeks to a month from today. Um, so if you want to see the full scope of things from everybody but DC, go to Previews World Catalog and Final Orders Do. We only show... Some of the things we think everybody are going to be interested in or most people are going to be interested in, but there's a whole catalog of it's, stuff. It's good to go there to see the one or two things we don't talk about, but it's not as fun. No. Make, make sure don't go there now. Stay with us. We, we <laughs> got the goodies. We got the goods. Yes. All right. Let's show some of them. All right. Last thing before we get into the comics. Um, we're doing free comic summer. This is, I think, the last week of it. We're getting close. We got some very kid-friendly titles coming out this week. But we still have all the Spider-Man, X-Men, stuff like that. So if you missed out on that, come see us this Saturday. Yeah. Tomorrow. I, honestly, I was worried about Free Comic Book Day this year because it got all spread out. Yeah. But I've enjoyed it. We've actually gotten to see more people, mm -hmm. I think. It gave people a reason to come in every Saturday and hang out and yeah. talk yep. comics with us. So, But on with the show. Boom. <laughs> right off the bat. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> he wants to know, why is this book not the context? <laughs> Yeah, questioning. So this is Batman 99. This is the almost the last issue of the Joker War for the main Batman series. It's going to end with issue number 100. If you've been following along with the story, you know that the uh, Batman has been plagued by Joker, a special formula of Joker toxin right now. He's not been doing so good. This whole war, he's been really knocked out almost. Uh, but he will enlist the help of Dick Grayson in this issue. So if you're not on Joker War... Uh, what? What? <laughs> we Who's have Joker, tons what? of back issues as well, but let me show you the variant because you might like that more. This is the Derek Chu variant. 
Uh, and this is our uh, Clown Hunter variant. So pretty pretty cool. Yeah, I like um, that. If you liked that character, what he did in the previous issue. His his hair thing. It's it's sort of punk, but sort of like Spartan. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's cool. mohawk. And yeah. I believe that was Dick Grayson on the cover, not Rick Grayson. So. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yes, you're you're correct. I looked that up. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next, we have something that's exciting: Justice League 53. This is, I feel like, one of our first uh, tie-ins with the death metal that's like kind of creeping into other series. And so, in Justice League at number 53, this is Doom Metal Part One with all these. I mean, uh, Detective Chimp is on the cover with a sword. I've never seen him so metal. He is the <laughs> most metal chimpanzee you will see. Um, so they claim this will directly tie in and impact the overall story of metal, which after reading it, I kind of believe, because they, they did hint at a lot of like, they're spreading out and all these people are doing jobs and they're going to come back together, hopefully, and, and solve the, uh, I, mean, I mean, look what they did with Nightwing. I mean, the stuff that's gone on in that has... Uh, oh. oh, wait. I'm talking about Nightwing to Joker War. Right, as yeah. As far as what they might do in this to metal, as far as, you know, the things that are around mm -hmm. it actually matter. Right. So, uh, this is exciting that it will it will directly impact it. They're not touting it as like, oh, it's just a fun, like, one-off story. This is, I believe, a five-part tie-in. Um, and it's uh, says it's about Nightwing, uh, you just brought up Nightwing, is on a mission to free the Legion of Doom, which, what? <laughs> They're the Legion of Doom, with the help of Lex Luthor. So, sounds really interesting, um, big stuff going on. If you're on everything, if you're, you told us you want everything, Dark Knight's death metal, you'll be getting this, even if you're not pulling Justice League. But if you uh, are just now getting into it, or you suddenly decide this looks like the part I want to read, uh, be sure to let us know. And it has a super cool variant that I just saw for the first time earlier, Starro. which is like the metal version of this. Starro. Uh, and this is the uh, Ian McDonald variant. So really cool. Almost an homage to... Uh, Brave and the Bold, the uh, the first appearance of the Justice League, with Starro on the cover, just a way more metal version of that cover. Yeah, I like the minimal trade dress that DC's been doing. Yeah, I mean, look how much of the art shine. Yeah, have done that for a while now. Yeah, yeah, it works better on certain ones, and this one is great. Yeah. So continuing with DC, Catwoman number twenty five is coming out. Um, so Catwoman returns to Gotham. And she is gunning for the Riddler and the Penguin. Mm. Uh, she's angry at them. Also, this is a Joker War tie-in. So, mm. um, as Andy was saying for the death metal stuff, if you've already told us you want all Joker War, you will get this issue. Huh. I feel like they slid that one in. I didn't know. Maybe I it's, I haven't yep. looked at that checklist in It a might while. be like the the one tie-in. I know like uh, Red and the Outlaws had like a single issue tie-in. I think this, this may one. be like a one issue tie-in with it. Check your checklist out. Yeah, then. doesn't everybody have their checklist either memorized or tattooed on, on them? Because I know on one thing for sure. Comic companies never change their mind about anything. Uh-uh, never. <laughs> they never slip things in. At the last and check second. out the love Lee this. Bermejo variant cover. I mean, come on, J just get it. Just look That's at one of the best out. I've seen in a long time. It, that, the lighting on it. Bermeo has been, I think, probably one of the hottest variant artists this year. Mm -hmm. He's just just knocking him out of the park. And it, it went from, like, I know a few people who collected everything Bermejo. Now it seems like a lot of people are. Yeah. Uh, he's really rock. He's the master of leather texture. <laughs> he just nails that leather. Yeah. All right, so this looks a little weird. It's sideways because this is the wraparound cover for Iron Man number one. A lot of you have been waiting for this series to finally be able for us to put into the system, and that day is here in this series. Um, not a lot has been revealed about it yet, but I do know that um, Iron Man is going to be putting away his high-tech gadgets and uh, maybe even a little bit of his ego and just going to try to get back to basics, just get back in that suit and go fly. So we'll see. We'll see what actually, how long he, he can think, stay away. I think he's no longer a guy. 
because they did the whole okay. thing where he was AI. Then yeah. they did it where he wasn't, but he was still worried he still might be AI. Yeah. And I think at this point he's like, okay, I'm not AI. Back to basics. I'm yeah. a human again. Yeah. So this is a more stripped down. What I'm really uh, excited about this one though is from that free comic book day book. Uh, we saw Iron Man uh, oh, maybe not right. in the best situation, and if this I leads up to that, that yeah. I think that's really exciting. Cool. Yeah, because we don't know how much of that book that was announced is going to be canon versus it going to be an alternate world story. Yeah. I hope they keep it canon. Yeah, I think um, it's really cool. Based on it. So what was it called? It was called Dark Ages. Dark, Dark Ages. Age yeah, so Dark any Ages. of those, any of you, I mean, it's been out a long time now. Yeah. Who read the Uncanny X-Men. Um, free comic book mm -hmm. day it ended with this whole marvel dark ages coming soon mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't seen it check it out it looks really cool all right get me back on my regular screen so i can see the variants or maybe i can you do have me on the regular screen okay good uh this is the <laughs> alex ross timeless variant uh for iron man number one so it looks super nice let's see what other variants do we have we have Ooh. this is the tinjin variant and then the weaver variant and so many of you like blank covers because you have your favorite artist or some hopes of getting something created in a future convention. Uh, this is Iron Man blank cover. So I, I just like to stare at them and imagine my own cover. <laughs> so imagination is enough. Yeah. <laughs> imagination. All right. So that was all the Iron Man covers. Next we have, which they've been doing this quite a lot lately, but they've all been really cool. Uh, a Spider-Man one-shot that ties in with the main story. We got the um, the Sin Eater one-shot. That was really, really good. It was really scary and really dark. Um, this time, we are getting Amazing Spider-Man, The Sins of Norman Osborn. Uh, so if you don't know, Norman Osborn has become the uh, head administrator of Ravencroft, uh, which is like the... Um, I hate making the analogy, it's the Marvel version of Arkham yeah. Asylum, yeah, it's the Marvel but it's, Arkham. it's yeah, the Marvel yeah. Arkham. Um, and we do know that Norman in Amazing Spider-Man 850 is going to become Green Goblin again. Um, so this is kind of uh, focusing on him and how he's kind of been leveled up um, by this new villain, Kindred. Uh, what I thought was really excited about this, and I was reading about it, is uh, Spider-Man has to call on his amazing friends. As you see on there, you have Miles, um, Spider-Girl, Spider-Woman, I think what, Silk is on there, um, and Madam Web. And they say this is, uh, they craft the Order of the Web. Right, I read that. I so I was like, that seems like the thing that's like, oh, this is going to be a thing. Like, yeah. Uh, I'm hoping somebody says it, you know, yeah. like it's not just them on the cover calling it that or in the solicitation. I think if somebody said it, I could see Madam Web. Saying yeah, that. she plays like the the Elrond in their uh, council yeah. in Lord of the Rings. Like you shall be the Fellowship Correct. of the Web. Yeah. yeah, so I think this looks really cool. We've got awesome Ryan Otley, uh main cover. Um, yep, and then we have the variant cover by Casanovas. <laughs> Wait, everyone's stuck in a web. I like that one a lot. All right, let's get to some X-Men stuff. So we have Giant Size X-Men Storm. They've been doing these Giant Size X-Men one-shots. This is by Jonathan Hickman. Um, I know that matters to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know he's on it. You know that it could be the stuff that really matters to all the books. Uh, he's not just sourcing it out or anything. Yeah. Uh, so back in Giant Size X-Men, Jean Grey and Emma Frost, they went into Storm's mind. And you got to see that a bunch of stuff's been going on with Storm we didn't know about. Mm -hmm. Well, in this, Storm apparently goes on a mission across the world to save herself. That's basically all that they have told us. Um, it has um, this very awesome variant. Uh, the is that the, the timeline? Time yeah. It's a little, different, so. a little different than the others, but yeah. Yeah, so there's going to be a total of, I believe, 32 of these timeless variants. We already have quite a few people who are collecting them all. Mm -hmm. It's early enough that you can be one too. But <laughs> don't be the person, because we always get this where, I don't know, a month into it, they're like, I want them all. And it's like, oh, yeah. you're already, we're already 16 covers <laughs> in. We'll yeah. try to help. Um, I mean, I, I think this is fun. I'm going to collect them all. Um, but on top of the, that, this variant by uh, Jen Bartel, 
I mean, this is awesome. This is like 1960s psychedelic voodoo child. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just I, I, I want like a tapestry of that to hang up near a lava lamp in my house. Or you something. turn a black light on that and it look, it goes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a noteworthy cover. There's so many good covers these days that if it were a slow week, I think that might be the one. Yeah. But it's not a slow week. It's quite a busy week. <laughs> All right, my laptop died, guys, so I wouldn't normally be responding to your comments, but I'm still seeing them and watching them. So if you want to get anything that you see, remember, just let us know in the comments, and we can hook you up, or you can send us a message. So up next we have Stillwater, and this is from Chip Zdarsky, who I like quite a bit. He does a lot of uh, – he has a good range of – I always relate him to the humor stuff I read with him first, but he has a really good range. Yeah. He's, a very good writer. So this is actually a Skybound series. Oh, so it's Kinda a little interested in that under the Kirkman umbrella. Exactly. Of comics. Yep. Um, so this is a horror title, just in time for Halloween. Um, so this takes place in a town where the solicitation said no one dies. So I don't know what that means exactly. There is a preview exclusive for it, and I read the first four pages. You kind of see you see a boy jump off a building or get pushed off a building. And all the bystanders around don't care. Uh, hmm. The father, I'm guessing, takes him to a doctor, and the doctor just kind of doesn't care either. So, And then it stops. The preview stops. So a really good opening. I wonder where this will go. I think there's just one cover for this, so if you want to try out uh, Stillwater, that'll be coming up soon. Skybound does really good books. Yeah. They, they have a certain tone to them. Like, they can be dark, but they have, like, it's kind of, like, it's a dark subject matter, but they're usually presented kind of bright and, and colorful and yeah. stuff. So we'll see. Uh, really cool. I, I was telling Andy before you got here that Chip Zdarsky wrote us retailers a letter yesterday. Hmm. It was in our email. Uh, no, it wasn't in like our post office box. Oh. <laughs> but it was great. Uh, it was really both funny and cleverly written uh, about why we should order lots of still water. I mean, I like. His letter about it was so good. I'm going to order more just based That's on really that. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Chip Zdarsky, I know you're watching this. So. <laughs> hi, Chip. <laughs> Thank you so much. And hi, John. Uh, glad to have you on the show. Yep, our new pal, John. All right. Ooh, now we have uh, from IDW, Star Wars Adventures number one. And what's cool about that is, uh, so we've had it, Star Wars Adventures before. That is not a new thing, but there are... Um, almost rebranding it or kind of restructuring it going forward. Um, so this is now called like Star Wars Adventures 2020 or something like that. But it will be um, split. Jump on point. Yeah, great jump on point. It's a number <laughs> one. Um, so this new way they're doing it is uh, it's split up and there's going to be two stories per issue. And I'm kind of guessing from what I read, like one might kind of be an ongoing story and the second one is like a backup, like one one-off story, but this uh, is going to be taking place between um, Last Jedi and uh, The Rise of Skywalker, kind of exploring Rey's training, um, Poe and Finn take Rey to a planet so she can train, but that planet has been occupied by the First Order, um, and then the backup story is a Darth Vader backstory. Um, so Star Wars Adventures, if you didn't know, is like a even though Marvel has the license for Star Wars and they do the majority of Star Wars, um, this is kind of a all ages or not like super like mainstream continuity book that they uh, send to IDW to do. And they've been really fun. They're uh, great for, even though they're all like just, um, I mean, I read them and I really like them. They're, there's some really good stories. Uh, and I believe this one has a variant cover mm -hmm. too, which is really cool. Nice uh vader i think he's on hoth it's hard to hard to tell you kind of expect it with you know the cold up. yeah yeah um and i think that's echo base in the background but yeah a really cool b cover too so if you're looking for another star wars book to pick up and maybe one that uh is just like fun adventure like star wars adventures is the correct title for that because they are Every issue is like a big adventure. Um, I have two things to add. One, I'm going to repeat your own words to you. When you saw this cover, you said to me, you're like, wow, that's so cool. You never see Vader on such a bright cover. Yeah. And that's true. The second thing is I, I know why they're doing a number one right now, and that's because Star Wars Adventures is one of those series where we keep having people add to it. Usually <laughs> series taper off, 
We have more people on it than ever. Yeah. And Clone Wars has been a big hit. Clone Wars has been so huge. That's why I said jump on point. Like I think they were like, let's let everyone feel like they've had it from the beginning. Now. Yeah. Uh, so this is actually not out this week. This is uh this this was originally on the FOC, um, but they took it off. This is how to the minute we are. Uh-huh. I checked right before the show. This is no longer orderable yet. So uh, this is a, a preview of something that you'll probably be able to order next week. <laughs> so there, there we have it. Oh, now is a I, – I would start every sentence out with, this is really cool, <laughs> but I only talk about really cool things. Um, I probably read more about this book than I did any of the others. Um, and this was supposed to be on last week's FOC, and then it was pushed to this week. Right. Um, so this is heavy from Vault Comics. Um, they're still kind of a smaller publisher, but they've had some really cool books come out. And this is by Max Bemis, who, from the comic world, you might know he wrote um, Moon Knight for a little while. He did that book that, like, the worst X-Men ever or whatever, about that kid who his only power is to explode, but he could only do it one time. Yeah, Uh, yeah, so he wrote that. Um, I knew him, like, a long time ago as a lead singer of the band Say Anything. Um, He's, like crazy good with like words and descriptions and everything and now he's gotten into comics um and how he described this which even if i i wrote it down and i still am like mulling over what it is so it is a existential um look (laughs) at uh, (laughs) about um like Toxic masculinity, but done in a way that's, uh, I feel like they say that because basically he says, oh, this is my version of Punisher. And he read books like, he was a big fan of like Preacher, um, and yeah, this is so weird. I'm like looking over my notes, I'm like, I'm trying to piece it all together. So the main character is Bill, uh, but he's dead, and he's in this area called The the Wait. And it's where, I guess, it's like a limbo type thing, but you're given, like, jobs while you're there. And he's now a, a multiversal policeman. And so what I think is funny about it is it all sounds, like, super crazy, but it's his way of being, like, almost taking that 90s era of comics and trying to, like, work through it. Like, this is a grizzly guy with a trench coat with big guns and... Uh, all this, all these, like really, almost like a Grant Morrison idea of, of deconstructing that that era of comics and looking at what makes these characters like Cable and Punisher like and such a I, thing. I'd assume that if it's in limbo, it's probably gonna have a lot to do with morality. Yeah. Of why are they there and what can let them move on or what can you know make them you know go to a bad place. Right. Uh, and I can see that from Bemis. I mean, his run on Moon Knight was pretty legendary. Um, what he was doing with his sort of uh, his mind. And right, yeah. So I'm not surprised to hear he's doing something very, it's like he wanted to call it heavy, like very heavy. <laughs> but he's like, no, heavy. Heavy. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. And then uh, I think, does it have a variant cover? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Which you can kind of see the idea here. These are very average looking people, but that are also demons uh, he's jumping at and everything. And this is by Daniel. <laughs> I don't have a first name. There's a lot of Daniels working in comics, but it's really cool. I'm excited for this just because Bex Bemis has such like a, a way of viewing things, and, and he's a real deep thinker. So I think this is more than just an action book. So this is a original graphic novel called Gunning for Ramirez. It is written, um, the cover is done by, and art, all the art is done by Nicholas Kittrimox. I don't know if I'm very familiar with this stuff, but it sounds cool. So pretty much uh, it is supposed to be about the greatest assassin in Mexico is secretly some uh, vacuum repairman from Arizona. Believe it. Uh, and it's supposed to be um, sort of a love letter to 1980s and 1990s uh, action thriller movies. And if anybody knows me, they know I love that sort of stuff, uh, particularly all the Paul Verhoeven movies. Uh, I'm hoping it's something like that, uh, you know, Total Recall, Starship Troopers, that sort of thing. Um, so, original graphic novel. We like to show those off as well. I think it's 
All right, so a lot of people have been asking us about this. A lot of people have binge-watched The Umbrella Academy lately, season one, two, both at the same time. Yeah, it's uh, on two screens, <laughs> one they hit play time. simultaneously. Yep, so it's finally coming. This is the first spin-off series of The Umbrella Academy. Hmm. And I haven't actually watched the show yet. Everybody keeps telling me I need to watch the show, but it's been just been so busy I haven't got to yet. So hopefully I don't you should watch the some show. names. Yeah. <laughs> You're just going to get a bunch of comments <laughs> that say that. But uh, it follows 18-year-old Seance, who has been kicked out of the Umbrella Academy. Did I pronounce that right? Seance? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's got the little thing over it. So anyway, uh, I've been kicked out of the Umbrella Academy um, and has to travel, you know, find a place where his powers will be appreciated elsewhere. So you look like a Love the uh, title of that. This is the B cover. Will haunt for quaaludes. <laughs> is what I'm guessing they're they're going for there. Wow. And the C cover. So if you're on Umbrella Academy currently, we will pull this for you. But if you're not sure if you are or whatever, you just want to double triple confirm. Just let us know. Let us know for everything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have goosebumps? <laughs> I don't. Until now. All right. So. <laughs> Whoa, that was the best <laughs> intro I've ever heard. Um, okay, now guys, we're just getting to some other extra stuff in our shows. So yeah, it's just sort of cool covers and number ones and other things we want you just to know are out there. So there's a new Goosebumps series that's beginning. Yep, it's, it's a five-part series. Uh, yeah, so we're definitely into the cool covers. Now. <laughs> yeah, cool cover. there's been some amazing Aquaman covers coming out. Uh, is this Kirk? Yep. Kirk that, that's again. the Kirk. Yeah, he did that really cool one that came out this last week that's Aquaman with, like, the sharks mm. behind him and everything. Uh, so, really killer, the lighting on this. Is so crazy. that's the B cover for Aquaman 63. This one. This that's one. the big one. Okay, yeah. I hope you guys are settle around for this for a <laughs> this second. Is cool. This is the fourth printing of Deceased Dead Planet Number 1 by Peach Momoko, who is probably... One of, if not the most sought-after cover artist right now. Um, so what a treat that we get this fourth printing. Very I know, covered. after four printings, now they're like, oh, we did black we did single color. Let's Do you want this. a big thing? I mean, that tells me that DC wants everyone to read some deceased. You know, mm -hmm. that they believe in the project. I've heard they're expanding it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's a good move on their part of getting such a good cover artist to do such a awesome cover for yeah it. and also i do recommend the seats i highly recommend it yeah so it's great that this is i mean this is a number one so if you were hesitant about the series but you love momoko and just want to check it out it's good reason to so yep okay more timeless more timeless variants so timeless yeah this is the captain america timeless variant and what else we got? Hulk. The Hulk. Immortal Hulk number the Hulk 37. Is, he does, Alex Ross does Hulk, and it, like, such a, like, if you had taken, like, an old, like, Jack Kirby Hulk drawing or something, and then be like, what does it look like in real life? Add in realism. He nails the, like, the forehead and the brow shape. All the veins. All <laughs> the veins. And this one has a hairy chest, which I would imagine he would really have. <laughs> this is my personal opinion. So this one, they actually resolicited this one. Um, this is for Star Wars. Number what issue we have? Number six. Uh, and the reason is, this is apparently the first time somebody's had a yellow lightsaber <laughs> on any right. cover of a Star Wars thing. It's a crazy, comic. like the things that we're picking out now of being like, this is. But I mean, uh, you know, this is a big thing. I mean, we've only seen Luke with green and blue, and now. What does this mean? What's this mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I grew up loving Star Wars. I wouldn't say that I'm as much a fan as you because you're the biggest Star Wars fan I know. Good. That's what but I'm, I'm I will say, I hold, I, I, I hold that podium. I watched the movies. I've read some of the books. I've played the games. And lightsabers are important. Lights, I mean, yeah. when you build your own and all, you understand that the yeah. color of your crystal. You can sit there for hours being like, I can't make a mistake here. This is this represents me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and, and you, you pick up a friend or, or an ally and you're like, no, we're not we're not we're not friends. With that. Yeah. We're gonna sit down. So Star Wars has been an incredible series right now. So anyway, for those of you who didn't know, that is why this cover has been uh, they've given <laughs> it one more week for us to get orders. So that's just the A cover too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. All right. No one cares about this series. <laughs> I was about to make that joke. <laughs> uh, this is Thor number seven, the Klein variant. So there is an A cover for this as well. You can go check it out uh, on Previous World if you want. But this is the variant um, in case you liked this a little bit more. A lot of people have been upping their orders with Thor with us. A lot of people who are just on the A cover are now getting the variant. Um, and so this is just our way to show you, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the, the cover that won't be in your face because the A one, you know, that's easier. To find. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Um, yeah, this one's super cool. Look at this that. is this is worth turning your head. To <laughs> see. This is worth hurting your neck for because. <laughs> I mean, get yourself a taco, do the taco neck thing, <laughs> enjoy the cover. This is this is pretty incredible. One, considering this book just came out, and now they Marvel is so into like y'all really like Thor, we are gonna keep it coming out. So already announcing the second printing, and this I guess it's a spoiler, but now it feels like every issue has something in it that you could consider a massive spoiler. Yeah, I mean the covers here, we can talk about it. So at the end of the last Thor, um, he gets a vision of his own death um, from Black Winter, mm -hmm. and this is it. It is Thanos <laughs> with an Infinity Hammer and a legion of either just dead heroes he's risen to follow him or undead. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just whatever's going on is, is gnarly and messed up and just, you know, and now... It's pretty much canon. I mean, unless they like change the future or something. Yeah, like that. he also has is a black Infinity Gauntlet on one hand. I, I was wondering about that. Yeah, almost like what Silver Surfer got turned into in Silver Surfer Black. But I mean, the the printing second, third, fourth, everything have been so hot because these also count as now. This is the first cover appearance of yeah. all of this stuff. Yep. Of yep. this whatever the gauntlet is, whatever the hammer is. Yep, and if you haven't read Thor number six, sorry, it's it's right there on the cover. There's and other really good you, stuff in it you too. You still don't know how it all went down, right? So. Um, and John and Davis, thank you guys for telling us your orders. John, I see you commented that you want two of those covers. If you wouldn't mind uh, just clarifying which one with me that you wanted when we go back through the comments to actually put the orders in, that's super helpful for us to know. Um, so just let us know. This is Venom twenty eight, the Stegman variant. So there will also be an A cover oh, as well, but yeah. we just want to show you guys the B cover. Also, when I last checked, the A cover actually wasn't ready yet. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, they just had the Stegman cover up, which is great as always. <laughs> so just go cool. ahead and hit us with all the venom that you want, everybody. We'll, we'll get it. All right. Okay, this is X-Men Marvel Snapshot, number one. Another Alex I know. Ross. I have not done enough <laughs> Alex Ross, and I don't even think that's the timeless one, is it? No, no. that's just the cover. <laughs> No, the Timeless one ones always have that white background. Um, it's just like a portrait cover. So the next one is X-Men Marvel Snapshot, the Riley cover. It's kind of an homage cover. Super cute, nice. I think it's kind of creepy. I think the pink makes it cute. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of cute, Vampirella, Trial of the Soul, one shot. This is the A cover. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, Andy had some interesting. No, I was just I was gonna say uh, before we moved on. Uh, this one's interesting because uh, you know a decent amount of people read Vampirella, but um, there's people who've never read it before. But this one shot is written by Bill Willingham, which I'm a huge fan of from uh, Fables. Fables. Oh yeah. Um, so he does like his own take on things a lot of the times. He very literary minded um very like world building story everything so i thought this was really cool that he is doing a vampirella one shot nice and i, I believe in <laughs> zenoscope this is bell hearts and minds number one you know cool enough looking cover we, we just want to show y'all see you see you know different people like different things so here's a cool looking cover you might not know about i believe it is just a one shot and this is Batman, uh, their dark design hardcover. So this collects Batman 86 through 94, and it is a hardcover. So if you missed, that will include, you know, Punchline's first appearance, include some of the most tumultuous things leading up to, I guess, uh, that's Tinian on those issues as well. So if you missed some of that in the beginning, if you had, like, dropped the series and just got on it again, it might be a good one to collect. It's 35 bucks and it's, it's a hardcover. Yeah, that's exactly what I think it is. I think it starts with Tinian's run. So do we sense. know, is this 
going to be like volume one of they this are run? Okay. It volume one. Okay, yeah. cool. It's just the hardcover volume one of Tinian's run. And another, yeah. like we were talking before, uh, Deceased. This is, which printing are we up to this now? Is a, this is second, second print of number, number two. two. Second printing of number two. If we keep buying them, we'll get a Peach Momoko for fourth printing <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, no, but we've kind of been selling out of this book. It is really awesome. And we get this really cool uh, black and white uh, second printing cover. Now on to the Strange Adventures reprints. Yeah, there's just a few as we can talk about. So there's a number one second print for anyone who wants to catch up with this series. Um, there is also a variant for the second print. This is the Evan Shaner variant. Uh, and then we have a second print for number three. That one's real cool looking. And there's a second print for number four. So DC just said, let's get it all back on the shelf. Let's get the series going because it kind of had a little bit of a hiccup there for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. So now we have the Captain Marvel number 19 second printing. Um, so I, a little insider information, a lot of shops in the Southeast in particular were not given this copy of uh, Captain Marvel 19. A, a lot of shops around here did not get it, um, all the way down to Georgia. Um, so this is the second print, but also I just ordered a ton offline for you guys um, who missed out on number 19, so you will be getting it, but if you also want... Uh, the Captain Marvel 19 second print. This is the different alternate cover for it. So that is out. And the team with the accused of mm -hmm. Ooh, Star, which this it's, is. Uh, yeah, the no number two. Number two second printing. This was another one that was kind of caught in a hiccup limbo yeah. type thing. Our series came out early this year. Um, we went through a whole time period where Marvel said these books are just going to be digital going to end digital and they went back and said no we're going to do them in print so through all that confusion people probably missed out on getting things and they said well i'm just not going to get it anymore or whatever um so now you can actually continue the series which has been really good mm -hmm. the, the number two second print just in time for the number five final <laughs> yes. issue to yep. come out <laughs> here's my favorite cover no, so there, we just want to let you know with this slide that they're doing a second print for X Factor number one. So any of you who missed out on it, or some people like to get all the all the prints. Mm -hmm. um, that's very common these days. So there is one, but they didn't have the cover ready. So this is us telling you about it while it's still available to order. Then Big Girls number two. Um, we If you missed Big Girls number one, we saw plenty on the shelf. This is a story where the women are giant monster hunters and some of the men are the monsters so it sounds like a very playful they said it was godzilla meets john wick meets the gr meets girls from hbo series i think there's some of the mashups in that so still have plenty of number one number two is coming out so this is the part of the show where we're talking about number twos and number threes a lot of times people read the number one and forget to tell us mm -hmm. hey sign me up so if you've read the number one the big girls uh now's your chance to let us know so this is Canto <laughs> 2, The Hollow Men number two. So number one, has that even dropped yet? I don't think, I don't think, I think they're making us. I think they're making us place the order before the number ones arrive. So that's another reason we tell people this, because often we'll – so basically they make us just guess. We will guess a number, <laughs> and then it turns out tons of people wanted it or yeah. no one wanted it. And so it just helps. You know, Those of you who are out there, I know you haven't got the number one, but if you know you're going to already want the number two, let us know. <laughs> Do us all a favor. Ooh, Hellstrom. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yep. I always, when I was younger, said Hellstorm. <laughs> sounds like a 90s metal band. I was looking it up the other day online, and somebody had written it as Hellstorm. So you were not alone. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. I'm not that big of a loser. <laughs> uh, and this is a uh, trade paperback, uh, Prince of Lies, which is this, what, do we know what this collects? Uh, I'm not sure. It's I don't think it's his. his it, 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 it's not his first series. Right. It's his later series. Mm -hmm. I believe it was in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I believe it collects that. But with the TV show yeah. coming out, we just want everybody to know if you want to know about this character, or it's a character you read about when you were younger and you don't want to search, uh, you know, back issue back bins. Issue bins. <laughs> yeah, there's a nice little collection that they're releasing. 
All right, this is the Betty Page number three, the Lindsner variant. We have a lot of people around here who are particular to Lindsner and his covers and his artwork. So if you want Lindsner, let us know. I got a question. What happened to the banana peel she slipped on? <laughs> It's like up it's in the flying, air, like yeah. spinning it's around. It's on the back. Yeah. It's, it's a wrap oh. around. <laughs> Ooh, Sacred Six, number two. Um, so. Number three. This actually. is number three? Yeah, yeah, we're doing three and four. Wow, this is just rolling out. <laughs> uh, so, number one has come out, uh, came out a few weeks ago. It's kind of the um, first big mashup of Vampirella. And some of these other dynamite characters, uh, Panthera, and some of those, and has uh, Jay Lee doing some of the interior art, which is really cool, and has some really cool covers. That's one of them, and here is the other one. That's so that's four, I think. Yeah, so we had cover C there, and this is now cover D. So with that said, yes, there is an A and a B that you can look for on Previews World if you want to see those. <laughs> All right, and Seven Secrets was so popular last week. Mm -hmm. That was one that it flew off the shelves. We had a lot of pre-orders. We ordered over and it flew off the shelves pretty quickly. So this is number two. Um, you can get your orders in. This is the main cover. And the B cover is my favorite. It is the Nguyen cover. So get to see a little bit more about what, what are some of these Seven Secrets. It flew off the shelf because of your great preview of it on our preview show. Thank you. <laughs> um, so this is Bleed Them Dry, uh, number one, the second print. For those of you who uh, love vampire stuff, um, you know, what's inside is sort of promised on the cover. If, if uh, you're itching for more, like, blades, stuff like that, um, the second print is number one. Almost like that cover more than the original number one. That's a really cool cover. It, it, it is. And, I mean, maybe they had a little more time to think about it. Yeah. Who knows? And uh, this is number three. So we're letting you know if you've read number one, number two, number three is still available for order. Whew, what a show. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot. a lot of stuff. We actually Comics had even more, but swing. we decided you guys probably need to go eat dinner. Um, nah. So... Anyway, like I said, that's just a small preview of things that are coming out in the next, this show is for comics coming out three weeks to a month from now, so go check out the rest of stuff on Previews World. You can see a whole lot of variants on there. Pick out the cover you like, let us know, we will get it for you as long as you get your orders into us by Monday at 5 p.m. And for all DC orders, DC is now requiring us to submit our orders on Sundays, so we do need your orders for DC Comics by Sunday at 5 p.m. And if you're not local and you find this video, we have increasingly more people watching these videos later, and, and we thank you for that. It makes us very happy. We would like to be your comic store, uh, so just contact us. Email, telephone, just whatever, and uh, it's easy. We'll open a pull box, and uh, we will take good care of you. We will. And also, if there was something you saw and you're like, I think I'm on pull for that, but you're not sure, just double check with us because we don't want you to miss out on something just because we both thought that we already added you and you weren't there. We just want to double check and make sure that you get what you want. Yeah, yep. we, we are all legit comic readers and collectors too, and nothing irks me more than uh, missing an issue. Mm -hmm. So we, we really obsess over it here. We really care about it. Um, I mean, hell, when the comics come in, we bag and board them wearing gloves and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're pretty serious about this. I mean, how look at the show we put together every week. <laughs> this is from love. Yeah, yeah. It's built with love. Yeah, for sure. It's something we're very proud of. So I just wanted to just wanted to get that out there. Well, that was sweet. Um, no, <laughs> we we appreciate all you guys. We love seeing you in the store. Um, and hopefully, it's a rainy week here in Chattanooga. So come get you something to read, and have a lovely weekend. And we'll see you on another one of our live shows very soon. We got some new stuff in planning in the works for you guys, and we can't wait to show we that do. in the next month we, or so. We, we do have some So that's just a teaser. Ours. I know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling. Uh, and of course, Megan and I will be doing our Sunday show uh, where we sell comics, our comic showcase show, this Sunday at 1 o'clock. Uh, and then on Tuesday, we just kind of do our, our regularly planned show where we um, review comics that we've read that day, comics before before they're even released. I wonder if any of us are going to read Three Jokers. <laughs> oh, yeah, guys. We're going to have to draw straws. <laughs> this week, Three Jokers is coming out. We got all the covers. Mm -hmm. So, okay. <laughs> all right. Well.
<laughs> I'm ready for a drink, and I do mean water. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you guys next time. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us. I don't have a drink.